Today we're going to take a look at a 3D printer that we don't get the chance to look at very often. This is the Zax Z3, a more industrial type of 3D printer. Hello everyone, Chris here, and yes, today we are going to take a look at the Zax Z3 industrial 3D printer. And there is a bit of an interesting backstory on how I became the owner of this Z3, but let's get some of the basics out of the way first. Zax is a 3D printer manufacturer. They're based in Istanbul, Turkey. The E3 does have a build volume of 300 by 400 by 350 millimeters. It is a Core XY design. It's fully enclosed, a complete aluminum frame, and it has pretty much every bell and whistle that you would ever want on a 3D printer. And let's just get this out of the way right here at the top. This machine does cost almost $4,000 US. It is not made for the average hobby-based 3D printing user. These are made for full production in industrial type environments, maybe even something like a college campus. These printers can talk to each other, something where you would be in full production mode at all times. With that said, how did I come about owning this Z3? It all started with E3D. They had an auction for the Sanjay Mortimer Foundation and I wanted to help out. And you can check out how that whole auction went down over here on YouTube. But basically, I was trying to get the winning bid on a Zax X3 3D printer, the smaller version. And the printer ended up going for $1,900, which I thought was a pretty good deal. And I was helping out the foundation. And to my surprise, when Zax got a hold of me to ship me my new 3D printer, they said that they would be sending a surprise. Now, I didn't realize what the surprise was going to be, but instead of the X3, the smaller version, I got the Z3. And let me tell you, from the time that it got off the truck, I knew that I was in for more than I bargained for. This is how the Z3 was unloaded off of the truck. On a pallet, strapped down, it took two people to move it all the way around the house and into the basement. The ship weight on this 3D printer was 60 kilograms. So we did manage to get it down to the basement and unpacked. And as most of you know, I usually like to do live streams on every 3D printer that I unbox. It just wasn't possible with a 3D printer this size. But I did take some video just for you. Let's hit that montage right now. So the unboxing and getting ready for your first print is very straightforward on the Z3. There's a whole section on just how to calibrate your Z to make sure your nozzle height is just right. It's really easy to use and intuitive. There's even videos built into the 3D printer you can watch from the touchscreen. We'll take a look at that a little bit more in a moment. But let's just look around at the 3D printer and see what you might get if you were going to purchase a Z3. What kind of features can you expect on an industrial type 3D printer? At first, from the presentation on the Z3, it's a very polished machine. It even has actual glass for the doors. I knew that about these 3D printers before I got it, and I was very nervous that these would be broke in delivery. But they came intact, 
and they are really nice quality. The second thing you're going to notice is that I don't have the machine turned on. That's because this printer has two fans that are pretty good size that run all the time to help filter the inside of the machine. Have a listen. The machine does run clipper, it has a Raspberry Pi inside. You'll notice when it comes up, it takes a little while to boot, but when it does, it has a boot sequence it runs through. It's very well lit inside. The NeoPixel LEDs change color to tell you what's going on with the 3D printer. Green when it's time to take your prints, blue when it's cooling off, red when it's heating up, and so on. But while we take a look around at the 3D printer, it's just a little more convenient for you all for me to leave it off so we don't have to hear that fan running so much. We'll start with the build plate here. You can see I already have quite a bit of mileage on my PEI sheet. I did do quite a bit of ASA. ASA likes to shrink and pull on the PEI, but it didn't affect the model quality at all. It held in there. Again, this plate is a 300 by 400, 350 in the Z. You have your PCB style heater plate. It's quite thick, very high quality, and you don't just get the PEI sheet, you also get a powder coated one. You do have three lead screws, so there is three point bed leveling. The machine, again, is Core XY, it has all linear rails. The tool head is an E3D V6, it has an inductive probe, and it just has a cover here on the front that's held on by magnets. So if you need to clean anything or inspect it, you can just take it right off. For the extruder, it is direct drive and they're using Bontech gears. It has some smaller 40 millimeter and 30 millimeter fans for the hot end and part cooling. If there's one drawback to this 3D printer, it could probably use just a bit more part cooling. This duct and fan are a little lax for things like PLA. But again, on a 3D printer like this, they're probably not printing a whole lot of PLA but it doesn't have near as much cooling as a lot of the other printers that I've used. And the part where the Zack Z3 really shines is in their user interface. Again, it is running Clipper firmware, so you get all the features within Clipper, but then you get this touchscreen that has everything you'd ever need on it, including stuff I don't even know what it is. But if you go through settings, there's an endless list of things that you can adjust you can even look at the onboard camera right here on the screen. It's capable of all kinds of different notifications as well as cloud services. You can even lock it down with a pin code if you want. And like I was saying before, you have service videos. Need to know how to do calibration? Just play the video right here from the screen. But all in all, with how the screen is laid out and they've done the firmware with all the different options, this is really designed for somebody that doesn't need to know a lot about 3D printing. Of course, it can connect directly up to your wire network or wireless, but all the features you need to get your print going and perfect the first time are right here. I can imagine a printer in this environment, after you've already sliced your file, got it over to the machine, you can just pick from the list and get another one you can just keep going like that, as many parts as you need. And at the back of the machine, you do have a spool holder with an NFC reader. Now, this does not require proprietary filament, but if you do want to use filament from Zax, their spools do have chips on the outside so that you know at all times from your interface what filament is loaded on what printer. You don't have to be at the printer to get all of that information. That's a very handy feature that you see on industrial 3D printers as well as all of your interface options down here for networking and multi-material units, your power switch, and your filament runout. There are a lot of 3D printed parts on this printer, but only where they make sense. And of course, this is Chris's basement, so you know I had to take the back off and see what was inside. So let's check that out. And this is where all the magic happens. You can see they have their own board. It has every connection for everything you might ever want on a 3D printer. It has six Trinamic 2209s. It is using an STM32 ARM chip for its processor. We have plenty of cooling over here with these two squirrel cage fans. There is a duct underneath the board, a 3D printed one, to direct that airflow. 
You've got all your USB connections, as well as Ethernet. You have a MOSFET over here for the bed, so you get a little bit of extra juice for that larger size bed plate. You have your NFC reader. You notice this massive Meanwell power supply. They've even taken the extra step and used ferrite cores around the power leads. You have a breakout down here for Ethernet. It does have a material plug listed. This would be something like a material station so they could keep track of what was in there. You have your fans that have the filter on the inside of the machine. All in all, just a really sturdy design like the rest of this 3D printer. But one thing I did want to mention was the only issue that I've had with this 3D printer, and that's this cable right here. This is the cable that goes out to the tool head and controls everything from the extruder to the hot end. Because of how large this printer is, it's really hard for me to show you a lot of things in this space. But since we're down here a little lower, it is a good time to show you that it does have a cover. It looks to be Lexan. You can put it on the top to keep all the heat in. That's a nice feature. But this is the other side of that cable that I was telling you about. Apparently, one of the pins came loose inside the tool head here, and it was throwing some errors. It wasn't a huge deal. This is fairly straightforward to take apart. I just removed this cable, Zach sent over another one, I popped it back in, everything was good as new. It is somewhat unfortunate that, that happened on a printer of this caliber, but support was great. So I swapped out the cable, the process was very straightforward, and the printer has been great ever since. Things do happen with mechanical machines, I completely understand that, and I've already tested out the support for you in case you have a Zach's 3D printer, and it was phenomenal. So now, this is a 3D printer, and it's made to be used in an ecosystem. Well, Zax has you covered on that end. They are using a version of Cura for their machines, but they are honoring everything open source, including the firmware and the slicer. This is your X desktop. It's going to look very familiar because, again, it is based on the Cura platform. They've just done tweaks for their machines. You can see all the different options you have for 3D printers up here. It will control multiple 3D printers all at once. You'll just have them down here in the list. Since our machine isn't on, it's not available. But just like any other slicer, you can prepare your model. You can alter all the different options, pick which filament you like. Again, the filament isn't proprietary. You can use any 1.75 filament that you might have. It's just not going to be able to tell what you have because it doesn't have the NFC chip like the Zax 3D printer filament does. You even have some advanced options down here that you can play around with if you want to. I know a lot of the folks that watch this channel are definitely going to want to get their hands on all the different things you can do. But again, this ecosystem is focused at a user that just needs a 3D printer as a tool, not somebody that wants to hack and tweak. You're not going to want to do that at this price point. And they do have cloud services that you can use from your cell phone. Unfortunately, right now with this remote control type app, it's only available on iOS and I currently have Android. So I hope that Zax hears that and is working on an Android version soon. Because it would be really handy to have the monitoring and the remote support right there on your cell phone if you needed it. So Zax is doing a great job at supporting both sides of their ecosystem. And for a 3D printer like this that's focused on industrial or companies, that's what you're going to have to have. You have to take all the magic out of 3D printing. They just need to be able to use it. I liken this to something like the Ultimaker ecosystem, where all the printers can talk to one another. You don't have to be next to it to use it. You just want to use it as a tool and get on with your day. So, Zax, keep up the great work on that one. I've already had several updates for my X desktop and the firmware on the printer since I've owned it, and it's pretty much seamless. It just takes care of it itself. So that's great to see. And with Clipper running on it, they have a long way they could go with adding features and maybe even making it a little faster if they wanted to. You never know. It's a well-built machine. They could probably do whatever they wanted at this point. So it is a 3D printer, and the one thing we haven't talked about is print quality. And I have to say, it's pretty good. Now this printer really isn't focused on PLA, but of course I ran some, and they did send me a spool. Which this Carmen Red that they gave me is really good. We'll take a look at Deadpool here in just a second. But I did a lot of trays with this for a project I was doing. I made some parts to mock up the candy claw machine that we did. I also printed quite a bit of ASA. And that's one thing about this printer, going from PLA to PETG to ABS to ASA, it's seamless. You don't have to mess with any of the settings. You just have to know what kind of plate you want to use, and the printer helps you with all of that. 
Now, one thing I can say, this is pretty affordable filament here. You can see it's a little bit stringy. Again, I think for PLA, the printer could use just a bit more part cooling, but really that's not the focus here. And you might notice there's a little bit of that moire effect on these parts. All these were done at a really high layer height and moving pretty fast, but you can kind of see that 45 degree st striping that we see sometimes with those Bontech gears. So there might be some adjustment here that can be done, or even something a little bit in the firmware that you can tweak to get that out, but some of the parts do have it, and it's more common on the thin wall parts. But then we'll take a look at Eastman's Deadpool bust here. It's much more detailed, and you can see just how good some of those features came out. It produces a very high quality 3D print. So there it is, the Zach Z3 Industrial 3D Printer. And this machine is more 3D printer than most folks are ever going to want or need. You're not going to see a lot of people shell out $4,000 to have a printer like this in their basement. And quite frankly, some of the $300 3D printers are probably capable of the same print quality that the Z3 is. Take into account we're using the same types of parts on this machine as you would see on a Prusa 3D printer. And that's not really the point of the Z3. This is designed for a user that just needs to use this machine as a tool to get their work done and have that end-to-end -end ecosystem, from filament to slicer to 3D printer. It is very much appreciated that Zax was able to send me the Z3 so that I could check it out. I don't get that opportunity very often, and it has been a lot of fun. So hopefully you found this interesting, the look at the Z3. I look forward to using it on a lot of my projects going forward. I have a very solid 3D printer just to get that work done. That will be it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.